Hello everyone, it's Love here and today we are going for amazing deck. I think it's the most powerful deck right now in the meta and to claim something like this I felt that we should share some stats and this is the history but I will guide you what exactly is the most important. Of course you can see the win rate only 64% and you might say that's not, not super high right? I want to win all the games. You are in the right place because we had different versions for this deck and actually the first version I was playing had like 45% win rate and after we tweaked it, after we tweaked it, we have 74% win rate, we won 17 games and we lost four, 6 of them and to be honest most of them were like hardcore mana screw or something like this so basically the deck is a full beast mode and uh, we hit mythic very quickly as you can see like <laughs> so so many won games and if you want to hit mythic very easily with this deck uh, you can do it it's such a beast it's so powerful and at the same time it's quite skillful and also really fun uh, this is one of my favorite decks to play so let's go into the deck list and all of this but you can clearly see the results and i hope that yeah and <laughs> uh, earlier in one of the versions we went like 100 percent so maybe i should clickbait 100 percent win rate but honestly 74 percent for this version and i really like this version so uh, let's go into the deck and enjoy or, or together that can be your graph you can see the versions <laughs> pretty clearly here so uh, let's go into the deck thank you and you know what to expect Hello everyone again, this is Sloth and this is our decklist that you wanted to see with this crazy win rate. And uh, I think that we can go into the card choice for a moment, I will try to make it brief to not bore you too much. And then we go into the strategy because I think that's the most important part, we probably know cards by now. So just a short introduction, discover the formula, one of the most important cards. We have a lot of value just thanks to this card and the tempo advantage that you get is the key to winning the game because with this deck you never end the value. You need as much mana and as much tempo as possible because this deck just grinds and grinds and grinds and you, you can go for infinity and enemy cannot keep up with it. So this is the win condition in most of the games. Other than this, we have like Farewell and Doomscar. Doomscar, for all those quick decks that you need to sweep to win the game, Farewell is amazing because it clears all the different decks, like Anvils, like Enchantment decks, all the things that, you know, are problematic for the Doomscar. So it's it's different kind of sweeper. You need to do it, uh, to use it very differently. So you generally want to Doomscar at turn three or four. And Farewell is like your late game, bait enemy into playing everything win condition. Uh, what more? We have of course the fairy and key because this is the engine that makes the deck so great. We have four memory de rouge because we don't want to run out of value and we have so much mana that we can go for the flashback. Other than this we have one negate. We aren't heavy on the counter spells. We have four jewelry because it, it's very easy to bait enemy into some place that you can get the counter and absorb energy is actually amazing if you can discount instant you usually want the instance and discover the formulas for five mana and memory de rouge for three you are in a great spot especially with divide by zero for two mana or even one you can discount it up to one it's pretty amazing we have one celestus because it's a good card as a one-off uh, we have one Faithful Absence because it answers the Planewalkers that the March doesn't. Because Planewalkers can be a pain in the ass and you don't have a great way to remove it. However, March of the... like White March is an amazing card, especially for creature runs and tokens and things like this and anvils because you can remove them very cheaply if you need to. You can get rid of the Dooms card that you don't need for the matchup and suddenly get a tempo swing. So this card is great. Okay, we also have some win conditions because we are control deck and we cannot kill enemy very easily. We kill him by boring him to death and he just leaves the game and some people cannot leave. They think we cannot smoke them. So this is why we have two Hall of the Storm Giants, not one, and you really want two of them. 
and double Emilia score, which is a very good way to cement the game when you are winning. We have two Field of Ruin. This is the sideboard. We have Mascot Exhibition, because that's your emergency win condition. If they kill both of the creature lands and you are forced to use Emilia core as a land, for example, or they just remove it. Uh, then you really need to be careful about mascot exhibition. This is the reason why we have two of them. Uh, teaching of the Archaics, because with divide by zero, this means you never ever lose the value game. This is one of the big parts of this deck and you really want two of them. I have been using sometimes the second one as well. And if you don't need the second one, you are probably winning by now. Reduce to memory to answer anything and science because it's science and you have to get it basic strategy with this deck the big engine that makes this deck and like so amazing and such a beast is the fairy and key to the archive you want to assemble this combo especially if you can discount one part of the combo or even two and you might even see it one of the games how crazy we can go with it uh, if you can for example get key to the archive for three mana then it's free with the fairy on the board because you can untap this and also one round so it's free and moment you do it and you get an amazing card from key to the archive you are in an extremely good spot and probably you win the game in two three turns what more a wandering emperor is good combination because enemy doesn't know how to approach you he thinks you might have a counter spell uh, you have so much removal if you he doesn't pressure you, you might discover the formula. Enemy doesn't know how to behave. And Wandering Emperor is amazing to add to this complexity. Very often you will use minus two, get rid of one creature, and then minus one for additional creature on the board. And it really helps to defend the fairy and just force enemy to do something, especially if they have pain walkers, you know, things like this. So Basically, this deck is a beast and you can grind nearly every deck in the meta with value with this. So that's what makes it great. You Even if you have one divide by zero and the enemy has five cards, you just bounce something, play teachings and suddenly you have three cards. You draw the fourth and you are back into the game. You have memory, the rouge with flashback. You can spend 11 mana and get four cards. So you need to get value out of everything and don't be scared for the long game even if you have little cards one top deck from your deck can be four or five cards whatever so just play around it you need to be hesitant with what you use farewell especially that's your big resource to win the game uh, if you have one don't waste it if you have two you usually can bait the enemy into playing everything he has because Nobody plays around two farewells generally. So if you have to, you can bait enemy very nicely. So I think that's the deck and uh, let, let's go into the games. I think you will enjoy those and the deck is pretty cool. Like it, I really enjoyed playing it, which cannot be said for every deck in the meta right now. And if you like this kind of deck and you like mythic gameplay and you know, high quality plays because I think that we did pretty good job without playing some of the enemies. Uh, click this like, subscribe, uh, comment the video, uh, it all helps and I honestly appreciate it. So that was a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of fun at the same time. So thank you and I hope you have a nice journey to Mythic together. And if you want to hit Mythic or just have fun and win the games by the way, uh, just get this deck and you will love it. So thank you and enjoy the, the games. So as usual, I'm not really happy about going second. Faithful Absence needs to be our out for this game. The hand is pretty bad. Pretty bad. So what are we playing against? Mm, some black control deck? Seems like it. Okay, that's good. The more time we have, the better. So this one will be white and negate is amazing. When, when I have negate, <laughs> I really feel safe overall. Now when enemy knows that we have removal, at least he should. I'm not into playing Field of Ruin. We don't really have many creature lands. Enemy will probably have more of them. 
and we need to be ready for deadly dispute and I definitely will counter it with absorb energy because it gives us uh, extreme discount on everything we do yep as expected so enemy cannot activate field of ruin we can but we have time so let's go for two white to black, uh, two white to uh, blue. Key to the archive. Like we could play this. What is the worst? Like Sorin? Probably an place Sorin, I think. That's not that's not correct play. We have memory the rules, so we don't need to be scared. Do it. First, we let him learn. Second, we absorb his energy. We don't have blue, which sucks. But we will have white. The enemy has quite a lot of cards, to be honest. So, okay, okay, you got it. The fact that we don't have uh, another blue to counter uh, is uh, like all the difference. So I decided that we can go into countering the value plays instead of like, you know, tempo or, or card advantage plays, at least for now. Because we have memory the rules that we want to cast. And now I will probably play the Field of Ruin. Uh, yeah, mostly to kill his hive because that will be a problem because we need our memory the rush uh, for flashback cost to get the value later i do want land i do want all of those except the uh, sunset reverie a key to the archive can be super huge we can bait him he will have exactly mana for hive and he won't think that we have uh, one mana I will do it. Field of Ruin is tapped, so he cannot kill anything to mess our mana base for, for the turn. And with Farewell and Faithful Absence you can... Wow. Wow. This is one of the reasons I didn't counter this deadly dispute. But I didn't expect this kind of discard. This is, I think it's a mistake. Anyway. Perfection. Because I hope he activates the hive and then we kill it and his full turn will be completely wrecked. And what do we get rid of? Wow, that's a hard choice. We want all of those. Faithful Absence is good. March is amazing. Emperor are so great maybe key to the archive we have a lot of those don't hate me for it i honestly think that the le least threatening thing that we have oh man this turn will be rough it sucks he has the treasure oh man do it do it no, he won't. Okay. You got it. I hate this card so much. Okay. But we untap with key to the archive, which is pretty amazing overall. I could get for another one, but I don't think that's the play. We are at 19. We have time. We have Field of Ruin, so the enemy cannot threaten us, really. This is a cheap bait play, hoping that we will tap out, and we won't do this mistake. This sucks. Probably target for countering. 
Or we could go for discover the formula right now. If we don't hit a sweeper. So we discard key to the archive right now. You know what? I think that's fine. I think that's enough value to justify. Wow. If we had one mana more, that would be so great. So now what do we discard? Key. This is one less. Okay. You got it, my friend. I would much rather save it, but if we can, that's still fine. He can kill our field of ruin if he wants. Then his hive is a bit more valuable, but he doesn't know about the march. We will need sweeper very quickly. Unless I do it like this. Like, I think we should be fine with value game, so I will make sure that the temple wise we are okay. Yes, he will draw a card, but it happens. And Juari can be very important in this game. Like, we will probably hit something. Emilia score. We don't have enough mana for this. So you know what? I will do it like this. Juari is amazing, but Emilia's call I think is more important. So we get hit for three. And see what the enemy does. Hmm. Interesting. We could discount everything. But we can also just make sure that he sacrifices something more. During his main phase. And I think we... No, environmental science. Like, we definitely need more lands. We need so many lands. And we still have very good counters. Like, we have three counters per man. We are in for the value game. We want to kill the Hive as well. He just has all of them. Man, they always have three or four of them in top 20 cards when I play against this kind of deck. We don't have creatures. So no sense to absorb energy, they are the same cost. This is pretty much just a better counter spell right now. So let's not waste it. So I think it could be deadly dispute and I'm not sure if I counter it. Okay, very, very good. Let's get rid of this threat because I need to be every turn aware that I need at least one mana to counter it. Let's make this a non-issue. And we have so much needs for the blue mana right now. We can even negate right now, if he does it. Do we go for this part, this kind of game? It's just two cards. It means he has planewalkers. So let's go for tempo. We have much more mana than he has. As long as we develop, I think we should be very good. And we are developing faster than him. We can draw more cards than him as well. At some point we will cast a miracle. Kill his uh, creature on the board and then he's forced to do something this is not threatening just irritating for a lot of turns okay sure a bait a fell stinger okay we have only two counter spells so we really need to keep it you know, 
last resort. Enjoy your treasure, enjoy your cards, we will draw more. We probably use this Deluge for 7, because we can. The only part uh, that I don't love about Memory Deluge is that I usually want to draw a land as well, <laughs> and you don't waste land usually on this. Okay, so how many farewells we used? One. So we have two more. Sure. We are at 12. We have Teferi, so I'm not super scared, to be honest. And this costs one less, so if we do it like this, then we have three mana, and we can get rid of the Stinger. Which is fine. It's exiled also. Divide by zero. And I think Hall is at the right place right now. Let's see. He might have a deadly dispute, and that's good for him. But we also have so many cards that we, we can go for the tempo. Good. First step. Oh, nice. Key to the archive is amazing. Maybe we just go for the angels. We have what? Two mana left. Not the most. Definitely not the most. So we can counter one big spell, and he has a lot of treasures. I'm thinking, because we have so many ways to play this, we can just remove this from the board and force him to play something new. Which I actually think is a good idea. Because then he needs to play something into the board. Oh yes. Man, that was amazing. That was really amazing. And we will use this additional mana. Because it means that right now... X is 4. We get rid of this. And we don't need to tap out so much. So this really helped. And this was our plan anyway. Like, we wanted to get rid of this. And fuck the enemy. Like, he sacrificed his real mana to do it. Sorcery. First, let's make him lose some HP. I'm not dividing it by zero because we don't get the stuff. I will absorb energy though, because then Emilia's call is cheaper, which might be a factor. And that's probably all she wrote. Sure. Cute Gust. And cute Felstinger. HP, HP. He could bounce it. So if he sacrifices it, it's not super scary. Divide by zero is a very important card right now. And at some point I expect some big play, like lol or something like this. We might even divide by zero this. But not now. And we have still double counter spell, which is the main thing. So right now we are threatening the enemy. And to be frank, I might even let him attack, because we kill him in, in two turns. How scared I am I? I'm not super scared. So we are at 8 and he will be at 4. And then he needs to do something, and we have double counter spell to prevent it. 
We also have Horror of the Storm Dance, so if he taps out completely, we just kill him next turn. Oh, and suddenly all this life pain hurts. We could force him to play it again, so he's at 8. Okay, this is a bit all in, but nobody expects negate. So now he will think that he can do it and that he will lose him the game. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> I will do it. Eight. Eight and perfect bait. Perfect bait for Mythic. <laughs> I knew he would fall for this because he exactly had five mana. Yep. Nobody expect the Spanish ne negate decision. Uh, I know that was horrible. Okay, another day, another game. Pretty good if we can use negate. Well, we will see. If we keep drawing lands, we get the Juari. If we don't get lands, we use Juari as a land. And here we go. Perfect. That actually turns out to be quite good draw so far. Oh yes. If we were on the, the draw, we would get wrecked. Like honestly, we would just get wrecked. <laughs> so freaking much. Maybe I should play this. Not perfect, but we will go from there. So, definitely blue. So now the question, do we go for Teferi or Key? Probably Key. They might have Skyclave Apparition, but this means they don't really do much. And we can get rid of Negate. I, I will take this. But I will wait a moment. <laughs> uh, generally, if you have the perfect card, uh, usually you just snatch it. And enemy can, based on this, know if you got the time warp or some sweeper. Oh, that, that hurts. Wow. But to be honest, it's not so bad for us. Because now we got a big creature. So yeah, we are behind with the mana. But we are not behind with the rest. We could wait one more turn, but if he's smart, he will, he will use Faceless Heaven. And I think that's the best situation we have to just play the thing, you know? And suddenly, we have it all. So, yeah, we might be able to cast it, but I just think that playing plant every turn is a bit more important. Okay, pretty darn good. So, if we play this, we cannot do anything else. Definitely not what we want. I think we do it like this. It helps us with the HP. And if he uses Faceless Haven, we just kill it. Oh no, definitely not. And he doesn't have great attacks right now. If he activates the cave, he cannot kill the fairy. And there's no reason to let him attack. Because then he gets token, this doesn't get tapped anyway. So he can take the mana anyway. And now he has no token. Oh, that's interesting. So, I guess he can go for indestructible thing. It has to be it. Like the Valoros stance, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I should know about this. But uh, it still doesn't change our play anyway. I guess we could get rid of Celestus. We could also go for the card. Let's see. Before we tap the fairy, we see what we hit. And as always, well, in this case, I don't think it makes a difference because we'll just do it right now. 
And I think we should discard it, right? He uses the cave, but that's okay. Okay, that's my... yeah, we don't need this land. That was a mistake. We'll see how big it was. It might have been a big mistake. Let's go like this. So, yeah, he... like, we have to kill it. It's not great. It's not great, definitely. Now enemy should know it's a land, because we have zero mana and we had priority. If that's only a cave, I'm pretty happy with it. And I might still uh, draw a card if we want. Because we don't have anything to do with the mana, and we need to start going with the value. Okay, that's exact. Like, we could go for this, but then we have no value. And this way we can play... Even this. So, uh, 4 mana. We have 4 left. It seems enemy doesn't have great cards in the hand. So let's go for the Doomscar. It will come handy at some point. And we are at 19, so this is one of also the reasons uh, for not defending Teferi. Because if we don't defend Teferi, we are having a lot of time to do stuff. Remember the Rouge? Okay, that's that's the stuff. So I think we go for dangers. They are perfect for the situation. Absorb energy is very good as well. But if we can start the game, that's already very good. This deck shouldn't really have any exile effects, right? Yeah, they might have brutal Qatar. But it means they have to commit to the board. So no, it's not optimal, we cannot interact with the enemy, but at the same time we make the situation hard. If he trades this, I'm super happy. And he cannot use Emperor. Right now he lost, he traded one for one for a very important card. And we are not in a hurry. We are definitely not in the hard. We can trade it very easily, and if enemy gets like Butar Qatar or whatever, like if he attacks, sure. Now he's forced to do something. Yeah, that that's why this. I'm not sure. Like Cave was his one big case, and with this deck, like going to Mythic is so freaking easy. Okay, so our enemy is blanket with very telling avatar. And nice sleeves. I didn't see those. So, our hand is okay. We can turn one this, turn two this, Doomscar, and then cast Doomscar. And hopefully that's enough to win the game, right? <laughs> we are playing Magic after all. And so far, it seems to be on point. We still want this. Why? Because we don't want to pay three life in this matchup. So I assume some Gruul aggro thing with Helena and Alina, so big, huge, big creatures that smirk you until you die, right? We have our bird gargoyle friend to assist us with this. This sucks, because this forces us to play main phase, which I hate. Oh man. This puts us in such a bad situation, but at the same time this guy gives mana, which creates more uh, like creatures that he can play, so we might be trade better. Okay, he's smart. He's smart, but not as smart as we. Or maybe he is. So, what? We probably kill this. It's already day, uh, night time, so we might as well, right? I put the stop just to make sure we don't miss any kind of face. Whenever he attacks, can you please not attack? Enemy seems a bit stuck on mana as well. We'll see if that's the case. 
sure. Only hexproof. So Doomscar clears everything. We will see if he plays more creatures. This freaking hurt. Okay, that's a risky play from the enemy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I could pay 3 life, but you know what? M maybe let's not. M maybe let's not. Okay, so enemy needs very good play with haste, and if he doesn't get it, we are golden. We could even go for the key. He shouldn't have much with the haste. So, let's go for it. I should probably play a bit more conservatively, but you know me. Or maybe you don't, and now you know. <laughs> and this is our land. This is very good. Honestly, this seems the worst. If he has 3 mana, he wouldn't play many creatures. Believe or not, I think Doomscar is the worst. And I'm not play paying 3 life for possibility of March. Okay. So he drew it. Yep, that is a good game. Because he cannot do much right now. So, uh, I think the correct choice, the only correct choice, is black and red mana. You can ask why. Because we can. <laughs> and this is our play. If he doesn't make anything big into the board, like 2 damage is fine for us. That's the best we can hope for. And, and here it is. This taps out, so we can go for Emperor. We can go for the Emperor. Whenever deals combat damage. So, let's give him attack. Okay. Okay. We could let him draw a card. Enjoy a card. Not perfect, but I don't think we get better occasion to cast this. And this should win the game anyway. Uh, how mana? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think he, he will scoop after this. Because we have counter spell red and a removal. So after this tour he will play something, we counter it and he scoops, I think. Hopefully. Okay, and now we end up with everything, with our full might. We need definitely more blue mana, we have uh, four of the wrong one. And you know, we have so many emperors. Right now it's just a cleaning duty. Enemy has enough cards that he thinks he's in the game, but I really don't think he is in the game. We need to be careful about the snake skill vein. At the beginning of combat, of on your turn, target gets plus two plus two. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, create a token. Their second spell each turn, even after he plays it. Huh, interesting. Interesting. Sure. Let's keep drawing. Divide by zero. And probably Juari. He's so mana starved that he won't play around stuff. And we really don't want to give him the token. Enjoy. It's whenever, so it can trigger every single time. And he flipped into the daytime, which is pretty awesome for us. Okay, so I think we won't divide by Z. Okay, it's interesting what we exactly do. I think we go for divide by zero here and bait double stuff from him. And we go for mascot. It's easier to close the game with this. 
So we have six mana. We can do this and Juari. Or we can just get rid of the pack, pack leader. Okay, that's something we need to be careful of. But usually you tap out completely to attack with this, so Emperor will be amazing against it. We have what? One mana short for Hall. Enemy has a very tough choice. Okay. That's very good for us. That's perfect target for divide by zero. And let's go for the science. HP helps. Everything helps. And when he attacks, we go for the Emperor. Which cleans the board perfectly. So we are slowly but surely just grinding him out of the game. And with each passing turn, he's just far and far from winning. The game was over after this sweep. We are playing against Burp. He should make the Fugur avatar or whatever it's called. Yeah, that was that was smooth. <laughs> we have very good hand on the play as well. So depending on what the enemy deck is, uh, we should be really fine with it. Okay, that's the turn to play, definitely. And we don't have much choice. When you are on the play, so this is Venture deck. Okay, we can go for Celestus, which is better long term. First venture into the dungeon isn't super scary, so he gains one life, scries, or loses life, so I think he will go for this, so he just scries. So let's go, especially that later it might be super beneficial for us to cycle cards with, you know, not doing anything. Like Celestus is one off, but it's such a big part of this deck when you get it. Oh, you are such a sneaky bad person. You monster. I always forget about this. Okay, so what did he choose? Each player loses two life. And that's what he will choose. So we could get rid of one of those creatures, not sure which. We could also Doomscar and get rid of it. You know what, let's not overthink this. Because the avatar, like definitely that's uh, something we could, should play later. The Archon is irritating. Oh man, I love Emilia score when it takes the city starker. So, let's go into the night mode, shall we? Shall we, my friend? The fact that we get healing is quite big. Oh man. I do want the land, but I want the rest as well. I always give game so much crap about not giving me lands, so I don't feel I can do it right now. I probably should do it a dance step, but my my emotions towards City Starker are too great. That's fine. Like, this has done its job. And he tapped out this in half, so it means he's mind. effectively at turn 2, which is super good for us. And then we untap, and he has nothing. Take action, sure. I love taking action. Oh man. I'm not giving up the farewell. Are we really doing it? <laughs> okay. 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 At least we are healing. Look how much we are healing. Okay, Doomscar, finally. Something we don't need. 
Good, good. Cycling starts to be useful. And we are at 22, man. Like, and he will double spell this turn. We were at 17 many turns ago. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with it. Oh, that's that's worse. I'm not sure if I'm fine with this. Farewell isn't perfect. So I think what we are doing... So this will create 3 mana. That's fine. We want to get rid of this as soon as possible. We go for planes because we cannot cast Farewell other than like without it and honestly like man i really want to get the teachings if we get the land we can do it if we don't get the land that will be a card not so easy to use of course we take action wow Absorb is so good. You know what? Let's do it like this. We cannot cast what we want. And we cannot cast it as well. And this deck shouldn't have many ways to get rid of artifact. I'm not sure about the spray. I'm really not sure about the spray. It might really destroy us. If enemy gets some artifact removal, that will hurt. Regrowth seems amazing. And even if he kills the key, we still have the Celestus. So we are able to cast it. Day of Judgment, pretty good. We might go for Doomblade just for Archon. Pretty hard choice. All of them are good. What is our graveyard? Man, quite a lot. A lot of stuff. It feels this one is risky. But I will go for it. It feels horrible to discard counter spell in this kind of matchup. And Doomblade won't work on the Beholder. So we go for the Archon. And they do have something, but it costs the full turn uh, like for them. So that's not the worst. Non-black. Colorless is not a black card. Three mana. Not the best. We can cycle. Another good stuff. But when we discard the teachings, he will start drawing with the bankbuster. He's trying to be sneaky. Gotta be sneaky, Charlie. Okay, he was banking it for a long time. Okay, that's fine. So basically he deals two damage. Discard the card. No. And believe me, it's not a dead card yet. It will become, but then we will cycle it. I think he values the Archon quite highly. Not sure if that's correct. We don't want him to use the Bankbuster and things like this. And we don't want him to keep attacking with the Paladin. We need as much mana as possible. Okay, the Fairy. What about the Fairy? The Fairy will get attacked. Probably by Bankbuster. But he can survive it. And the fact that we get HP, cards and tempo is good enough. 
It's really not very easy to, you know, answer. Let's go for blue, to not be very obvious. Normally we would go for the different color. Okay. We still have the teachings. He might have cute idea that he will play the Archon and keep drawing cards and if we get uh, teachings then we cannot play anything else. And if he does it, he will be very sad panda. Amazing. He can still draw. That's something to remember. I hope he grows it. Perfection, because I don't want to get rid of artifacts and I don't want to give him the card. Perfect. So now we can exile it. Nice. And now we can get rid of the artifacts very easily. Negate. Not the worst card. Do I care about the teachings? So this turn I do the farewell. And I have Memory Deluge. So honestly, I think that... Oh, that that is something different. But I still think our plan was good. Creatures. And I think that's it. Like, I will go for enchantments. Because why not? Graveyards are fine. Artifacts, definitely fine. My friend. That's not how we behave. Usually it means that the enemy knows that he's losing. Yep, and he wants to pretend that he didn't want to wait and not that he was losing. And you don't want to mess this kind of situation. It was hard, but key to the archive and the rouge was enough. Alright guys, this is our mythic game. And we are going to go to Mythic with this deck so easily. So, Juari... We have three lands. We have divided by zero, so I'm okay. It's not the best draw. We might lose if enemy goes super hard with the creatures, because we have no sweeper. Okay. Green. So, either Gruul, or just m like mono green aggro, I guess. Not what we want to see. We don't really have two mana play. We cannot also r risk using Juari as a counter spell because then we can get like royally mana screwed. Okay, so it is Gruul. The fact that he has tap lands is so helpful. It's like a saving grace because we might be able to counter some kind of ranger class? Who knows? Who the hell knows? Negate is pretty good. I also don't put stop so the enemy thinks we don't seem to have anything. Because not everyone has to mana play. Discard the card. If you do seek a card with mana value equal, equal to that card's mana value. Okay, I didn't see this one I think. So some kind of modified deck, it would make Thundering Raichu here, you know, the Pokemon, the, the red Pikachu. Tamiya safekeeping, he discarded it. Oh, so he wants a one drop, but he doesn't play it. That's super strange, why wouldn't you play it? I guess he specifically wanted a different card. Okay, but overall we are in a very good situation and we are pretty, pretty good on our way to Mythic. You will see, we are going there after this game. Oh no, it's a, it's a point of damage. Our arc enemy, the one damage. You can have it. Hmm. Weird. That's so weird. 
what are we doing here? Honestly, if, if that's the case, Planewalker. I'm, okay, so he seems stuck, I guess. Like, I'm not dividing by zero. Man, <laughs> come on. We could go all in with key to the archive, but it might end super bad. I honestly think we go for the Emperor and start killing those. Even if enemy plays something scary, we will have Emperor on the board. With two toughness as well, and a creature that trades very well with his cards. I hope he plays something main phase. Okay. It's not a modified creature. And he has something. So I think he will be able to make some of them modified. But I hope he cannot do it to both. It means that I will get a very good trade. Enemy has two or three mana, probably three. Keep watch for intruders. And, like, are you really wasting your modification on saving a 1 1? If that's the case, I'm super happy with it. Perfect. And right now, we can do nothing for. I think enemy is at the point of scooping right now. He needs very good play. So he needs a land and a very, very strong play for this turn, on he or he loses pretty, pretty much. And I don't think he has strong enough play. Like, probably this 3-3 tree tree that uh, gives lands when modified creature uh, hits a player, I would guess. Maybe Kikijiki Mirror Breaker. Man, I played with the original one. That's completely fine. I still have the board. And you did nothing. Okay, so... I honestly think we are in a great spot to win the game. And I could go all in with the keys, but it would be a t like throwing of our mythic game. Yes. So, Tamiyo safekeeping, that's something to remember. I would guess that's what it is. Enemy can play a 4 drop at the best. We can divide by 0, get a land, and start going. We definitely just need more lands. And if he play like. He's do he's not doing anything so far. If he taps out to kill this, I'm more than happy to do it. Then we cast Memor Deluge and we go further ahead. And when we are at the point of having 6-7 mana, we play key to the archive. Uh, divide by zero and negate something and that's it. Okay. Cool. Enjoy. I'm your safekeeping, I think. But he cannot attack. Oh, you might regret this one. I wonder, is this possible he kept it, knowing we generally have key to the archive? And if we played it, that would be quite a bust. Not the biggest one, because we get additional land and we still trade the card. But it could be a dead card. So enemy is really thinking hard. Probably about tapping or not tapping. Okay, so we got this stuff. Target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. So he wants to trade like this. Uh, adds mana. 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. You know what? Probably not exactly what you want to see here. But man, that's such a good target for divide by 0. I think I will do it. We can counter it next turn. And I really want my lands. Just give me my lands so I can farewell you. Oh, that's an expensive one. So, if we play the land, and I will be thinking it's our mythic game, guys, and we are getting there because this deck cannot lose. Mm, so, we can cast Negate. Yeah, and then he fights, we counter it, and then he just attacks for 3 or 4 or something like this. Then we untap and we are good to go. Let's start like this. 
It hurts. It hurts on the inside. But I still think that's the correct play. Doomblade is amazing. But I think approach of the second sun is overall a bit better. And I will get rid of... We have a lot of those. You know? We have a lot of those. Enemy knows we have something because we didn't play the science. So he might change his play. But usually they don't. And it's so good to trade just one for one. Like, uh, you know, he gets so much value. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Not relevant. So the counters is the only problem and mana acceleration for one turn. Now the question, do we sweep? We could sweep. So it's what? Four and then we can do stuff? What kind of cards this guy has? Oh, but he still has a Tamiyo thing, which doesn't change anything. Because this is exile effect, so it hexproof or indestructible doesn't make a difference. Because right now he can just attack for 4, and with this we are quite resilient to the damage. Yep, we cannot block. We could even just cast it and force the enemy to kill us in next few turns. So, first things first. Let's show some dominance. Man, enemy just keeps this tummy, I think. How much is it? Seven damage? Seven life? Like, he will go hard. I don't think it's hard enough to kill us. This also pressures the enemy to attack us as much as he can. It's risky. We could play this. Then we have six mana. Yeah, I think that's the best play. I think this is the best play. And we go for island. We don't have those. We heal up. And we play the approach of the second sun. We need to be careful about Bosaiju. If he... And we are at 20. <laughs> so fun. If he Bosaiju and we take the, the card, then it's not at the top. So right now, enemy needs to kill us. And it's pretty good because it makes enemy to go for the risky plays because otherwise he just gets outpaced. So it's like... A failed run thing, I guess. I don't know. Weird. Weird deck, my friend. Some damage, but definitely not enough. White, white. And do we go for the graveyard? I might have something, I guess. And we don't really care. Creatures, enchantments, and graveyards. Everything again except artifacts. Bye. This is good enough. The uh, fact we can uh, memory the rush is good enough to use this removal. Especially if Hall of the Storm runs. So, worst case, we can just, you know, do stuff. That's such a weird deck. I have no idea what the idea is here. Okay, sure. Let's draw into something cool. Divide by zero seems okay. And I guess the march. Both of them are amazing. Okay, so we can get rid of this. And this creates a, a thing. Like, we just need to survive one turn, right? So, enjoy your last turn of this game.
Shear. So we wait for attack, otherwise he gets additional mana. And guys, this is our mythic. I told you it won't be a problem. <laughs> it never is. Now we cast it because this destroys his uh, one card. And that's all she wrote. Damn your safekeeping. So clever. So clever, my friend. Can I has mythic? Man. Man. You really need <laughs> to chill out. Uh, what's funny? If we bounce it, then he needs to use this mana. Or we can just get our own. Oh, see? That's a mythic level play. Okay, nice. Uh, let's go for mascot exhibition, I guess. Can I kill him? See? I, I'm so proud. I feel that, yeah, that was a good game. He really stuck those things. And we did it. Actually, this was such an important play. It would be hard to keep up with everything. Let's give him some love. Good game! And this is our mythic. And for everyone that wants hit mythic, just go for this deck. It's freaking monster. It kills enemies so quickly. Like, I'm around 70% win rate with this deck in Diamond, and that's with all my mistakes and not even playing some of the games because I had real stuff, so it's crazy. So, enjoy the deck, thank you for watching, and if you want more Mephic, clever action, subscribe. And thank you for watching, really. Enjoy!